Should we buy or sell the European Financials ETF? First off, read this disclaimer carefully. Then do your good deed of today by liking and subscribing. So let's go to financial services. It is here. European financials 43% from the 52 week low and 12% away from the highs. Here is the chart, weekly data points, and we can go pretty far back. The interesting thing about this chart, uh, that's definitely these time cycles. So let's look a bit at, at how uh, reliable the time cycles are. So the time cycles, they have been pretty darn good at calling the major trend for the ETF. So fantastic for swing trading. Based on the current time cycle, we are part of the declining phase that is supposed to extend uh, into you know mid uh, uh, 2024. So there could be more downside. Uh, we do see that um, the lows get lower. Well, let's paint it in. Let's do, get my handy tool. So you see here that. Well, the lows haven't generally been lower. You see that, okay, so this low is a bit higher than, than this uh, one, but this one is definitely lower. Uh, we also have lower highs, uh, which is the definition of a downtrend. Uh, when we go here to the daily data points, we see that there's been a very, very strong rally for sure, but we have now headed into a lot of resistance zones. So let's look a bit here at, um, the RSI and the PPO, like that. So let's zoom out a bit here. Uh, we do see that on the weekly data points, MACD has been higher during previous rallies. Uh, looking at RSI, weekly RSI, during this peak back here, uh, RSI was a bit higher than now. Uh, during this uh, ecstatic peak, uh, we went way higher. Um, but when we go back to these highs back here, we had RSI in this territory that we are in now. Looking at the PPO, which measures the purple PPO, which measures the distance between price and the purple 20 week moving average, we are at the level that has previously called uh, temporary highs, like here it was a bit shortable, but also some of the longer term highs. When we go here to the daily data points, the daily RSI is extremely high. Uh, the previous time we had this daily RSI was back um, here, and then it did actually become a bit of a shorting opportunity, then it went a bit higher, and then a bigger shorting opportunity. It was temporary. If we go back here, um, it was not as temporary. This was a very good time to put on a bit of a uh, more of a longer ish term short, with of course a stop. But yeah, we are very high. So here in my notes, I write uh, that we are overbought. That is the key uh, signal. Uh, and uh, I give the bears minus a six here on the technicals. Next, uh, let's look at the seasonality. Okay. So to the left here, we do have the uh, seasonality forecaster and it is pretty bearish here into uh, late uh, January. That is when the lower usually is formed. When we look here to the right, we see that so far in 2023, we have a 9.7% gain for January. That is one of the highest uh, rallies we have ever had in this ETF. The only one higher here was in 2012 with an 11% uh, gain. But we are very outside the norm, which means that based on all of the data here for January, the probability of more upside is rather limited. And when you look at February, uh, which is the next month, you do see that there's a lot more red here uh, than green. And 2022 was actually pretty bad. And also 2020, uh, looking at March, uh, since 2018, uh, it's been rather red. So the seasonality here is not that good for the bulls. So based on the seasonality, the probability of more upside at this point is very limited. So I will give um, the bears minus five here. 
let's look at the fundamentals. So I am comparing the Europe financial CTF with the, the global financial CTF. When we go here to performance, uh, we look at the last year. Uh, so 6.66% loss for EU FN, uh, minus 8.98% for the global financials. So Europe has outperformed over the last year. Beta 1.17 versus 1.08. So higher beta meaning more volatility. Price earnings is 16-ish versus 17.5. Yield 2.34 versus 1.07. So from a fundamental perspective, uh, the European financials are, you know, there's more value. Here you can see the components of these ETFs. And surprisingly, there is a lot of large caps and also, um, yeah, a lot of exposure uh, to America in the one to the right. Um, this is one of those um, uh, ETFs where, uh, I mean, the EU FN, where there's decent um, yeah, you know, diversification here between these countries. So obviously, I mean, United Kingdom, the old empire is going to... Um, to be very sizable, and it still is, but um, you do get uh, decent exposure to other European countries. So in this case, um, there is more value in the European financials. So those who do look at fundamental analysis, they are going to be attracted by the yield, uh, the valuation, um, but it wasn't like extremely good. I mean, we have seen a very sizable rally al already. So I will, I will give the bullets a three here. But this is definitely not no deep value. Let's look at relative uh, performance. Uh, I am comparing the Europe finan financial sectors against the S&P 500. In this case, there's an 83% positive correlation, 94% positive with the IXG ETF, which is the global financials, and only 9% positive correlation with the US 10-year yield. Looking at the daily data points, we are at 46% positive with S&P 500, 92% with uh, global financials, and minus 4% here with uh, the 10-year yield. And so what happens with the IXG is going to have the biggest effect on the EU FN. Uh, we do see time cycles here as well, and recently there's been a pretty strong rally. You could make the case that this looks like an inverse head and shoulders pattern, which is bullish. Um, so the long-term trend could be bullish, uh, but uh, that doesn't mean there will not be pullbacks. So let's look at the probability here of a pullback. On the daily data points, we are very high on RSI, and also here are the, the, the purple 20-day PPO, very, very high. Usually this leads to a pullback, and you see here, when we look at RSI, it is very common for us after getting over bot ish, we do actually explore the low end of RSI. So the pullbacks usually are meaningful. Here are the weekly data points. In this case, we aren't really overbought at all. Here I am comparing the EU FN with the global financial CTF. Weekly data points, uh, we do see that uh, the European financials have underperformed the global financials for a long time. Uh, we are seeing a rather strong breakout here. Uh, we are, however, rather overbought here on the weak list. The previous time we had this very high RSI was back here, and that led to substantial underperformance from the European financials. Uh, when, when, when we look here at the daily data points, we are extremely overbought. So, yes, the European financials are doing pretty well. They are outperforming, but they have outperformed very, very substantially. So let's look a bit there at uh, the seasonality. Okay. Um, so we so far have 2.78% outperformance in January. That is on the higher end of this spectrum. Uh, recently, February has been very mixed, but um, well, the problem is that 2022, it was very bearish.
but the preceding years were not that bad, but March is very bad, so March is definitively a month where um, the European financials have a strong tendency to underperform uh, global financials. Uh, so in this case, I do think I will give uh, the bears some, um, I will give the bears a five here. Uh, so we do end up with minus 3.3 in favor of the bears. We have one key interest signal, and that is that we are just very overbought. Uh, the bulls have been on a very strong rally, but very, very, very strong though. So you have a setup where you have bears who will be attracted to short the European financials due to the excessive move. And also the European financials bulls who are sitting on big profits. They also want to hold on to those, those profits. So the bulls might look for better opportunities elsewhere uh, when you have extreme RSI and stuff like that and dodgy seasonality then it makes a lot of sense to tighten stops. So there could be multiple types of sellers, but uh, you always, of course, want to have a stop loss. Nonetheless, in case there is some, you know, uh, outlier event that pushes the European financials even higher in this one, uh, uh, in this move. Uh, we have some time left. Let's look at some of the major uh, holdings within the ye EUFN ETF, the European Financials ETF. Page S, B, C, Holdings, it's on the top. Holdings, as so let's see here. Yes, it is listed on the NICE, so everyone can trade it. Here is a, yeah, so, um, so the, the, what is a bit of an issue here is that we are still rather low historically. Um, then again, we have recently seen a pretty big move also here on the dailies, I guarantee you we are overbought. Oh wow, we are overbought. We are really overbought though. Seriously overbought. Um, previous time we had this RSI was here. You did get a bit of a pullback. Uh, let's look at how shortable it was then. Uh, you got um, this move, yeah, 60 percent but you had to have a stop because you then did see a big roar higher. But when that uh, high was formed up here, you had an astonishing, yeah, 21-ish percent short. As a H H HSBC here, here is, it is really overbought. Uh, looking here at the seasonality, pretty bad leading into February. Uh, looking here at February here and also March here to the right, it looks terrible uh, from a seasonality perspective. The gain so far is 15% for January 2023, which is way outside the norm. Uh, let's look here at uh, the fundamentals. That, let's move it. So here in blue, you can see the price book over time uh, in the copper price to sales ratio and also price earnings here in green. We are rather high, but um, there's st we're still, we still have, you know, reduced valuation for this one, uh, which makes sense given what we saw in the chart. So long term uh, devaluation is not really like terrible, but it, you definitively have seen even deeper value, uh, not that, that far back, you know, before the recent rally. The yield is really good though, 3.71%. Um, that's, that's a nice uh, yield, even at these high levels. One analyst, uh, Let's, well, let, I think we can change this HSBC holdings because it might be uh, an issue with the listing. So here is the one that's, that is listed on the London Stock Exchange. In this case, we have 18 anal analysts with a one year price target. Okay. So the average price target is 9% above us, highest is 33% above, but you do see that the minimum is 20% below us. So the analysts are overall, they are bullish, but they are not like roaringly bullish at these uh, levels. Uh, so let's say a 9% rally, where would that get us? Uh, so let's get the measurement tool and uh, project a 9% rally. So, nine, so here 9%, it would push, uh, put us above these uh, resistance levels here, also these resistance levels, but 
uh, this cluster uh, back here of resistance levels, uh, this cluster would be a problem and be like a ceiling. So, so the fundamental uh, analysts wouldn't help out with that. Of course, obviously, the fundamental analysts could, of course, revise uh, their price uh, projections. But basically, we have looked at European financial CTF. Uh, we are very overbought. Yes, it could go higher, but the big bull move has most likely already been made. We looked at HSBC also made a big move. Um, extreme RSI, a very good reason to expect some kind of pullback. So yeah, I think there's more reasons to look for bearish and then bullish opportunities at this point.